Welcome everybody. As promised, this is the tutorial for MS Excel out of our workbook question 3a, which is this document over here. So this question has, or the section has question 3a, 3b, and 3c. This tutorial will be only on question 3a. So let's go back into Excel. So as we know, Excel is a spreadsheet and it consists of columns, which is the severe, A, B, C, D, E, and one, two, three, four, these are the rows. And this is the cell. This over here is the cell address. This is the formula bar. And this is my different views. Um, this is my menu bar, file home, insert, page layout, formula, data, review, and view. And this is the ribbon uh, for home. Very similar to MS Word, we just got copy paste, our formatting bar, our alignment, wrap text, merge and center. And this is to format our values and the information within the workbook. Now, remember that Excel has sheets. It can have a combination of many sheets linked to one another using formulas. What can we do in Excel? We can do formulas and we can do calculations and budgets. This tutorial, uh, this question, we are going to create a spreadsheet for Crawford Books, which is an old question paper that we're working through. Let's read the instructions. Uh, instruction one is create the spreadsheet on the following page. Do not type the row and column headings. They just show you where to type. Number two, font must be Korean U12 or Arial 11. It should be either one, not both. So, as explained in class, uh, I, I showed you the, the basic functions already, but they're saying use either one of the two fonts. So, I need to select the whole spreadsheet, the whole sheet, and to do that, it's Control and A, or between the row 1 and A, I can click on that, that is select all, and now I can change your or my font. So I'm going to use Arial, and the instruction is 11, so I'm going to keep to that. Another thing, the difference between Word and Excel is that in Word we could have, we could change the, the sentence case or lowercase to uppercase. In Excel you can do that, but it's a bit trickier, so we rather type the information directly into uppercase. So I'm going to start typing the instructions, what they're saying is insert the following header, but we need to type in this information over here. Remember, this is A, B, C, D, the column headings and the row headings. We're not going to type that because that just indicates for us where to type. So we're going to type in this information over here and then we're going to go on to question instruction number three. So Crawford Books. in capital letters. Now I can see that Crawford Books is overlapping from column A to column B. So I need to increase my column width so that it doesn't get cut off. So if I put my cursor between column A and B, my column, my cursor changes. So I can click, I can drag to increase my column width or I can double click on it and it auto adjusts. It's very really simple like that. The next instruction is to insert the following header in uppercase, student number left, and question three right. I'll go back to Excel. So there are three methods of inserting a header and a footer. I can click on insert and I'll get header and footer. Or on my views at the bottom right, this is the normal view. Then I have page layout view, and then I have page break preview. But I want page layout, so my page layout has changed, and I can see my head on top, 
and if I scroll down I can see my foot uh, at the bottom it also gives me a clear um, a clear way to see that one page and I got the second page over there as well so I'm gonna type in my instructions it's your student number so you will type in your student number there and I click on the right and this will be question 3a you can see that it's in uppercase so you type what you see as well so I don't like this view working in, in this view so I'll change it back to normal I cannot see my header and footer now but if I go to file and print you can see your header okay then I'm going to start typing the document uh, as as it states below over there it's stock and then stock on and the cell below is hand please do not wrap text the instruction is very clear stock on is on b3 hand is in b4 you need to type where the information is supposed to be so i put my cursor between a and b double click to increase my column width and then i'm going to start typing selling enter price total and percentage space of total and amount so i need to increase this over there and increase my column width as you as i showed you now to increase your column width it's the same way to increase your row width you can increase it there, but don't increase it if there's no instruction for you to increase it now remember in excel we're working with text which is also known as labels so if they speak about labels they're talking about text if we're talking about values we're talking about numbers i'm going back to the instruction over here they're saying adjust the column width i haven't typed all my information now i'll be typing it now just to save some time i will just do the first row and then i'll show you how to format your figures your figures which is numbers also known as values so it's fiction this is 20 and this is 70. so i finished typing all the information as required below over here i've typed all the information in the correct cell address I'm going back to Excel. Now they are saying display the figures as indicated. Now this is as it's indicated. Now what do they mean by that? Remember this is integers. What is an integer? They will always ask change to integers or change to decimal places. What is an integer? An integer is a whole number without decimal places. If I go to the formatting under home formatting of years this is known as a general number general then you have number which has decimal places so this is not a whole number it is not an integer the information should not this the number should not be look like that then you have currency and there you have accounting now this note there's a difference between accounting and currency in accounting you can see there's a gap between the r the currency and the number uh, short date long date and percentage now, we will be working with that but they're saying it should be general so i'm going to click on general below over here is, these are just shortcuts to this over here but this is to increase decimal places this is to decrease so that's increasing decimal places and this is to decrease so that's how to format that is percentages if you don't want in percentages if it gives you this without you changing the formatting you just change it back to general 
Okay, let's go on to the next instruction. The next instructions display the figures as indicated. We have done that. Number four, just the column width. We have done that. Save the spreadsheet as question 3a. Print the spreadsheet with row and column headings and place the printout in your cover. So number six, save the spreadsheet. I'd recommend you to save your spreadsheet frequently for technical problems and also for load shedding that we're facing these days. So I'm going to click on File, Save As, Browse, and save it as question 3A, and you're going to choose where to save your information. So I'm going to save that, replace it. Yes, I have saved it before. And the next one is print the spreadsheet. Print the spreadsheet with the row and column headings and print and place it in the place the printout in the cover. So first of all is row and column headings. So this is A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are row headings and this is column headings. So they want us to show the column and row headings because they want to see if you have typed the information in the correct cells. So I'm going to click on File, Print. There are numerous methods again, but I'm just going to show you this one. So we can see that this is without row and column headings. No row readings, no column readings. So if I go to page setup, it's margins, header footer, sheet. So if I click on sheet, I have options, grid lines, black and white, draft quality, and row and column readings. Please do not select grid lines if they do not ask you for grid lines. So they're asking for row and column readings. I'm going to tick row and column readings. I'm going to click on Okay, so now it has row and column headings. Now, not before. By default, you always print without. But look at the last instruction. It says with row and column headings. So once you're done with this, you're going to click on print. You're going to save your information. And that is question 3A. Thank you.